Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Conversations with Team Fuqua on the Tech Club. Um, really happy to have you with us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Kevin Geck. I am a double dookie from San Francisco. Prior to Fuqua, I worked for a healthcare technology company in the Bay Area. Uh, at Fuqua, I uh, am co-president of the Tech Club with Julia. I'm in the Wine Club and Fuqua Hoops. Um, this past summer, I interned at Deloitte in its technology consulting practice, and I will be going back there full-time back in San Francisco. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Julia. I'm originally from Brazil. I went to, graduate to undergrad there. I studied industrial engineering, and I was in a startup before school for about three and a half years. During the summer, I was at Amazon as a product manager, and I'm going back to Amazon after school. Uh, well, I'm also in the wine club with, with Kevin, so yes. we kind of like to <laughs> work together, Yes. two clubs. Um, but again, welcome, and we're very happy to be here. The first thing we want to say is that you can ask questions at any time. We will answer, try to answer all of them. Ask questions about the club, about recruiting, um, about life at Fuqua, anything you want to know about the companies, our internships. Uh, we are here to answer anything. Yeah, we're really an open book. We were on the same first year team and then we decided to yeah. to work together uh, in the tech club as well so you should feel comfortable to ask us anything so we'll start with what is the purpose of the tech club uh, the purpose of our, our club is to improve and sustain tech recruiting outcomes at Fuqua we think it's our job to help Fuqua students who want to go into tech go from point A to point B to, to their internship and job of their dreams. We have people coming from really a huge variety of, yeah. of backgrounds. Uh, and so we work with everyone in a variety of different events to try to get people up to speed and get people going. Yeah, and I guess to make sure that we were helping all of these different types of uh, people with different backgrounds, we got a cabinet together that has someone that was in nonprofit before and she went to tech during the internship. We have people from all sorts of countries. Yep. So we try to have all the perspectives in the cabinet so we could really help everyone. Um, we do a lot of events. So the club uh, starts the year with the conference, which we call Doctors Web, Disrupts. Um, and we have people coming from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Cisco, and a bunch of companies. Uh, we usually choose a theme. And this year, we were talking about disruptive technologies. Uh, so we had a panel on, on fintech, so we had people talking about uh, Bitcoin and everything. Um, we had Cisco coming. Uh, what else? Who else was here? We had Amazon give uh, a talk as one of our keynotes as well. It was really cool, especially you might have heard of this Bitcoin and blockchain thing that's happening. We had Cam Harvey, who's one of the leading yeah. uh, academics on the topic, a Fuqua professor, talking to VPs from Citi, Visa, MasterCard. It was, it was super cool was to have this type of dialogue uh, at a, an, a, our biggest event yeah. um, in and the are, club. And this year, we're both taking Cam's course. So it's a crypto ventures course. It's really interesting if you're interested in tech. All right. So, one, so we have the big event with Duke Disrupts. We have a lot of stuff in terms of preparation for the recruiting process. So our um, nuts and bolts sessions are Tech 101 series. So that takes you through your resume development, your personal story development, how you're going to transition from whatever you're doing into tech. We talk about how to do networking. How do you get on the phone with some random person yeah. <laughs> uh, in Seattle working for Microsoft and strike up that conversation and really learn more? We talk about off-campus recruiting. So it's like, so I want to work for um, a smaller company in the Bay Area or in Seattle. How do I, I get to that? And it's a lot of the second-year students working hand-in-hand -hand with the, the first years to give them the knowledge and get them going in the process. Yeah. And this year, we started a program called the Pipeline, and that was kind of our baby. Uh, we thought last year we didn't have enough support for the interview preparation, so we started this thinking about that. And we focus on PM, so product management and product marketing management. Um, and we did everything, as, as Kevin just said, from resume to interviews. 
Uh, we tried to make it a little more interactive. So we even had time uh, during the sessions to like go over people's resume and then time to practice the interviews. I think it was a very successful program and we hope the next um, presidents keep it going. I will. I think they will. <laughs> Apparently it's been working, but we'll yeah. see. Uh, another event series that we do is called Lunch and Learns. Yeah. So as second years, we know pretty much everything. We <laughs> traversed the recruiting trail to get these jobs. And so we will hold sessions in which students from like Amazon or students who worked in a particular role like uh, operations in a tech company um, we'll sit around at, at lunch and talk about their experiences. And it's a real great opportunity for students to hear what it was really like for interns at these companies. Uh, because it's, it's kind of hard to tell from the outside, so really important to, um, to get that, that perspective. Yeah, those, those events are really nice because then you get to see everyone that was really working in these companies and you can uh, meet them and then have conversations later. Um, but they're very insightful. So other things that we do, we do the weekend cities. So we have usually around 80 people going on these trips. Um, they go for a week for San Francisco and Seattle. So San Francisco includes all the Bay Area and then a couple of days in Seattle. Uh, we visit all the companies. So last year when I was a first year, I led one of them. Um, we went to a, a bunch of companies in the, um, in the Bay Area. It was really interesting. It's usually around 15 companies in a week, so it's like intense. You get to meet all the alums that were working there. You also get to meet people from other schools that are working in these companies. You get to talk to them about the roles you're interested in and really get a feeling of the company because you spend pretty much like three hours inside their office and like s seeing them interact with each other. So it's really helpful. It helped me choose a company I wanted to work for. Uh, and I'm sure it helped Kevin as well, right? <laughs> yes. So it's really awesome to see what it's like to be at the company, to go on you know, Facebook's campus, Google's campus, to go to Redmond and, and go to the Microsoft uh, campus or the, the Amazon offices in, in uh, downtown Seattle. You can't replicate that. It's really great. And we have such strong alumni presence at all of these yeah. Companies, they come and talk to us. They're really excited. It's really, it's really a crucial part of the overall tech recruiting experience. And we, we've seen the program get bigger year over year, and it's really awesome. Yeah, um, I think every year is more people that want to go. And seeing the alums that are there, like just hosting us with such a smile on their faces, is really something that kind of makes me feel good about graduating and like yeah. going into the workplace and knowing that I will have those people there to keep the team Fuqua kind of going. So it's a really nice thing. Um, and other things that we do, so we work a little bit with the companies. So many, many of these companies come to campus for events. Um, most of them are CMC organized. So it's the school kind of leading these events with the companies, but we also do other other ones kind of more informal so we have happy hours we have like case studies where they will go over a business challenge and you can kind of help um walk walk it through it so it's really interesting and we do the case competition so this year we had uh, microsoft on campus for a case competition and cisco uh, in those case competitions they have prizes so they have money prizes sometimes you get a product and it even gets you an interview so they're really good we recommend it <laughs> yes so we really get the opportunity to work closely with the companies. It, there's really nothing like having five people from Microsoft come to Fuqua and grade your talk, give you feedback on your presentation about how to market a Microsoft product. Yeah. It's really an awesome, awesome experience. Um, and besides the different company events that we do, as we go through the year, there's various different training sessions that we have. So products like Tableau or technologies like uh, SQL or Agile. These are things that a lot of people are interested in. If they're, if they're going into tech, they might have various levels of exposure yeah. to that. So if someone in the club is familiar with that or if we have a contact from outside, we bring that person in and we have a session and everyone gets a lot out of, out of them. Yeah. Everyone seems prepared. Yeah, it does. And it helps. I think these trainings are very good to help you prepare for your internship. So we did the sequel one last year, right before the internships. Uh, it was the second year that led it. Uh, and, uh, and everyone that got into, I don't know, 
got back to Amazon and they had all this data to work on. So knowing SQL really helps. You are not dependent on everyone. So it's good. And we try to do it more and more every year. Um, this year we had someone that was really uh, an expert in Agile. So he gave uh, an Agile workshop and we got really good feedback. We hope that next time we'll have another first year and another second year that we'll do it. So that's kind of how we work. All right, we'll take, we have a question. Let's see if we have any questions yet. No. No, none yet. All right, well, you guys aren't doing your job. You need to ask <laughs> us some questions. We already, we hear ourselves talk a lot. A lot. <laughs> but maybe that's why we got this role. Uh, okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the recruiting process. So this might be why you're going to get an MBA. You want to recruit. You want to go work for Amazon, <laughs> yeah. Google, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, so you want to know what the timeline might be like. So... For the biggest companies, like the Microsofts, Amazons of the world, the recruiting process starts in September. So not long after you come on campus, they're going to have their company presentations and you're going to start meeting with people and reaching out and learning about, about the firms. Generally, the resume drop for those biggest companies will be in the end of November, beginning of December with a little bit of variation year to year. Interviews are held in January, generally like the second half of, yeah. of second January. Week, third week. With, with final rounds, again, depending in the latter half of January into February with offers being given out, um, usually in, in February. Yeah, beginning of for February. The, for the big companies, yeah. for the, some of the biggest companies. Now there's some smaller companies that might have different yes. timelines. Yeah, so with this big companies, it's really quick. You get here, you have no time to think you're recruiting. With the smaller companies, it varies a lot. So we can't really say that it's after uh, the big companies because they kind of happen all the year round. But the biggest bulk will happen before after February. So February, March, they will kind of heat it up. And that's when they're recruiting because they don't really have a, a big planning. They don't know how many people they need to hire a year before. So that's why they're, they're, the most of them are a little later. Um, but you should always be looking for positions. There is always things open kind of all throughout the year. I think another thing for you guys to think about is the types of roles that these companies are recruiting for. So they're recruiting MBAs, and they're recruiting MBAs generally for the business functions of the firm. So in tech, that's anywhere from program and product management to product marketing, yeah. finance, operations and supply chain, uh, and strategy. some strategy, and then a few full-time full sales and business development yes. as well. So think about, when you're thinking about what companies you want to work for, don't just think about, well, I want this one type of position. Think about other positions mm -hmm. that there might be, especially considering your background. If you have a finance background but want to be a product manager, one way that you could get into a company like Microsoft, and this has happened to many people before. I, I, one specific example comes to mind. Yeah. You could get in in a finance role and then switch to product management, either yeah. for your full time or as really. you go along. So those are just some, some roles to consider as you think about your, your career yeah. path. Yeah, it's always better to be a little more, more broad to what the, the roles you're looking, because they do vary a lot between companies, so it's very, it's important that you speak to people that work there and they understand what's the difference between someone in product marketing and Microsoft or in a smaller company or Amazon has product management, but Microsoft only hires for product marketing. So it's very interesting because they have a bunch of differences and it's important to talk to people to really understand what is it that you're looking for and how can you actually get there if you don't have the background. So you can do what, what Kevin said, you can get there with the function that has more to do with your background and you can always switch later. These companies, they change roles all the time. So it's very easy to navigate from one role to the other at, once you're in there. So make sure you play your best cards and kind of go through what you have to offer to the company. You will have so many conversations about the definition of product management and product marketing at various companies. So be prepared to do that company by company research on what the role entails. I think we have some questions. Yeah, we do. We have three questions. Great. So I'm going to start uh, answering Emily. 
So rotational and leadership programs. We do have a bunch of companies that have offered those, uh, those roles. So if we look at Amazon, Amazon has two rotational programs, the retail one and the leadership. And the supply, the, the operations one is also a leadership program. Um, then we have, what is the other one that comes to mind? Uh, Cisco has Cisco. a... Cisco has um, an HR uh, rotational program yes. and a product management rotational program um, as well. Yeah. So they're usually kind of focused on one function, right? So if you look at a finance one at Amazon, you will rotate between different teams and between different types of finance roles. So for example, they have some up, some uh, roles that, are, that work close to the product. So they're kind of inside the, um, the retail team, but then you also have the business development finance people that are working for the broader type of company. So you will rotate in these different positions, but also between different teams. Um, and I think that's kind of how it works in most of the companies. You're kind of focused. All right, next question from um, Luis. It sounds like product management manager is the most common path or role for tech. Are there other roles which you would say are also common? Definitely. So product marketing is a big role that these companies like MBAs to do. Finance is a huge role that, that they have a lot of need for. Um, also, in some companies, that kind of depends, like operations and supply chain. Mm -hmm. So if Amazon yeah. and Apple come to mind as two companies with pretty good operations, operations. and supply chains. Yeah, yeah, so they're really, they hire a lot of folks um, from MBA as well. That's true. Yeah, I think the product management ones are the most hype ones. It's not, maybe it's not the ones they offer the most, but it's what people are kind of looking to the most. And I think that's why we get the impression that that's all it is available. But there are many options. Um, we have a friend going to HR. Um, so you do have options. Okay, so the next question, Luis. How do you leverage your geographical proxim proximity to RTP? Is there a lot of recruiting coming from the companies there? Uh, we do have people coming from IBM and Cisco. So we got Cisco hires for, for the Bay Area and for RTP. Uh, IBM has a big office here. Is there anything else that it's big? Yeah, some other companies that come to mind are Red Hat. Oh, yeah. Um, SaaS. And then uh, startups, like smaller companies, there's definitely activity in the area that ends up being more in uh, just-in-time recruiting. Yeah. But if you guys have learned anything about what's going on in the Triangle recently, more like every year more and more and more commercial activity, particularly in the tech space. And frankly, these companies love Fuqua students yeah. coming to them. And so. Yeah, and RTP is one of the regions that is still on the bed for, for Amazon, the second headquarter, so we might have an Amazon office soon here. We don't know. Uh, but yeah. with the regarding the startups, the, like, it's, it's hot. There are a lot of startups around. For me, it was, I had no idea it was going to be so big, but it's really incredible how many companies you see and how many companies that are actually succeeding. So, yes, there is a bunch of things around. Awesome. All right. Uh, anonymous user, anonymous. <laughs> Are there any crossovers between this club and the consulting club? One of the things I'm interested in is going into consulting, but with a tech focus. So there are, so I am doing technology consulting and there are several opportunities in that space from companies like Deloitte, Accenture, McKinsey, um, Bain is starting. Bain is starting one, uh, a few others, and it depend. And so it's kind of like this little. It's a new space, kind of in between both the tech club and the consulting club. Yeah. So for me personally, this past year, I have talked to a lot of students and tried to help them understand like what tech consulting is for the different companies, and then also prepare. And so. Like we, me and a couple of my friends, we've written some tech consulting cases to add to the case book yeah. to try to like get that going in terms of what we, what the difference would be. So the tech consultants at like Deloitte, Accenture and McKinsey to, to a certain extent 
are going to advise all types of companies, companies from every industry on what their technology could be. So you could have a project with a, a bank on its technology, uh, um, fin- uh, a, uh, a, manufacturer. a manufacturer on its technology or a retail company on its technology. So you go to different companies you, and you advise them on, on how they should work on their technology strategy. Um, so and then would you... The would clubs you, itself? Yeah. Uh, so I don't think we have many events together. We do advise students that are inter- interested in that path to do the consulting roadmap. Um, so the consulting roadmap, it's similar to what we do with the pipeline, but for consulting. It's all the case practices and like how you're supposed to answer those questions and like how to prepare. And they do a lot of uh, interactive sessions as well. They practice. So it's similar to what we're doing for tech, but we're preparing for product management questions, and then they're doing the consulting one. So we do advise people to go to those sessions. Uh, and if you're recruiting for both, you should be going to all the sessions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question. So, oh, there's a question for okay, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin, would you mind discussing how Tech Club has helped you with recruiting for Deloitte and their technology practice? Sure. So in the tech club, we cover everything tech. We look at the companies who are making technologies that are changing our lives. As a technology consultant at Deloitte or any of these firms, Fortune 10 companies are going to be asking you, so what should we do with blockchain? <laughs> what, do <I laughs> what do I do? What's my IoT strategy? You know, Should we implement Salesforce's latest version or not? Or not. You know. So being, getting for me, getting the exposure to all the Silicon Valley and Seattle companies through all the tech club events, yeah. you know, reading their annual reports, visiting them, talking to their alums, preparing, it makes you prepared to have someone from a financial services company ask you about their cloud strategy because we would have talked to Microsoft yeah. and Amazon. So I think there's a lot of crossover there. Sure, I agree. You can't only be prepared to case, but you're going to have to be prepared to talk about all these technologies and have an opinion about it. Yep. So, okay, our next question. I am a business analyst with a strong experience in insurance domain. Post-MBA, I'm interested in pursuing a career in InsurTech. Do the tech club have started a building a relationship with InsurTech firms? Oh, that's a hard question. And to be completely honest, we don't have a very strong uh, relationship with those companies. Anything that comes to mind? Yes. So one thing to think about when we're looking at a super hot technology area is at, at a business school, we're going to be sending students generally to the bigger, more established companies uh, that take MBAs. So like, like we said, like Microsoft, Amazon... Cisco, uh, there will be fewer alumni like directly in the next hot startup in insurance technology or, or, or fintech. Uh, a pathway that many students do is they, especially if they're transitioning into tech, mm-hmm. is to go work at a large tech company first, develop, continue to develop an interest, and then leave and go work for a startup when you have some experience. Alternatively, if you're really interested in a particular area, you can go out and make your own way and find yeah. the company and the role you want, but that definitely requires a lot of effort on your part, and there's no guarantee that we have someone who started an insurance tech yeah. startup. And another thing that I would say, so Malcolm, uh, our CMC person, he is like, super engaged with the club, and he has helped us throughout the year like plan everything. He's all the time trying to find people in different companies. So it is important that once you're here, just go talk to him, tell him what it is that you're interested, and I'm sure he's going to come up with some context to help. Yes. All right, next question. Similar, have you all worked with fintech firms or visited these types of firms via Week in Cities? Are there students or alums that have recently gone into fintech? So we have visited. We visited SoFi. SoFi was a really fun visit. Um, We are working. So that's like Julia just said. Malcolm is working to develop those types of relationships. Again, because these companies are pretty young. Like I read, like Square 
just hired its first product management intern like two years ago, and that's a company that's public. So it's it's a different, little different uh, market in terms of like MBAs getting directly. It's more if you want to do that directly from the MBA, you have to work. Uh, and get to that, but yeah. it's something that this, that we're definitely yeah. working on. What I would add is that having Cam Harvey at the school, which yeah. is the crypto ventures specialist in the business, uh, helps. So he has a lot of contacts. He's one of the professors you could reach out to, and I'm sure he's going to be able to find uh, some contacts that would help a lot. So next question. I got a question for me. Do you want to ask me? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Julia, this is from Marissa Cho. Could you share more about what function your internship was and full-time position after graduation will be? Also, how's the culture at Amazon? Yeah, sure. <laughs> of course, I'll ha I'm happy to talk about it. So my internship function was product management, and I was allocated in a team called Subscribe and Save. So I'm not sure if everyone is familiar, but instead of just buying something once at Amazon, you can subscribe to, like, I'm going to subscribe to, I don't know, to Tide. And then every one month, every two months, you will get your Tide delivered without you having to do anything. So I was working on that team. That team is the replenishment team. So we focus on everything that kind of helps people buy easily. So maybe Amazon sell easily. <laughs> uh, so in fact, there was also the, um, the, um, the buttons, the dash buttons, which you can just press and it will order for you, and a bunch of different things they were developing, which was super interesting because there was a bunch of kind of um, like hardware things they were developing, um, very new stuff, things I had never seen. Like it was a very uh, interesting uh, job. My role uh, itself, I was focused on a project to try to help people get their, the maximum of their discount for subscribing. So you subscribe to one thing, you get 5%. If you subscribe to five things, you get 15% off of everything. And we were just trying to make better recommendations for people so they would um, subscribe to things they're buying all the time and get the discount and just get a better value of the program. So that was what I was focused on. My team was about six people, so it was my manager three other product management managers and two program managers. We had a bunch of support teams. We had a finance guy, we had the BI guy, like a bunch of people around. Um, I was a little surprised with the culture. To tell you the truth, I went there a little scared. I was like, maybe I'm gonna cry every day. I don't know, like if people are gonna be too rough. But I was positively, positively surprised. Uh, I had a great experience. My manager was a sweetheart. He is an amazing person. Like he took us to his house for a barbecue. My entire team was very supportive. They all helped me write my paper. Uh, one of the questions I always get is about the paper. The, ba the this white paper is a big part of the culture there. So everything you do, it's no PowerPoint allowed. So you can never present PowerPoints in in the like bigger meetings. So what you do instead is a white paper that can only be six pages long plus all the appendices. Writing that is not an easy job, it, but it helps. I thought it was extremely helpful because it kind of makes you go through your project very organized and you like write everything you're doing and it makes you think, it makes you like question your assumptions. So it was actually more of a help than a job. It was really good. Um, I like that. Uh, the presentations are tough. Uh, people are s extremely smart, so they will ask you their hard questions. They will find you the one thing that is wrong on your project, but it's they are extremely receptive. So although they're hard, they are always like trying to make you do something better. They're not trying. They're not hard on you just because they want to be hard on you. They want to be nice and like help you do something better. Uh, so I had a great experience. I. I think it depends from team to team, but if you find the right team, it's great. After I graduate, I'll be still a product manager. I have no idea what team because they don't tell you. So I'm probably only going to find out the team I'm going to end up in around March, March or April. You do get to kind of choose. They will give you options and you'll give them the preferences. Um, but I will be allocated to a random team, but I'm excited for anything that's coming, so I'm good. <laughs> okay, one more question. Marisa, 
What a relief. Yes, uh, it was very. We were all very relieved that this was that this was good, even though there was a lot of late nights doing spreadsheets. Oh, yes. Apparently, um, regarding internships and job offers, did you guys have more luck securing something through CMC facilitated events or student initiated ev- efforts and hustle? So I'll take this one. So statistically, I think about half students take an internship from the on-campus recruiting. So these are companies that physically come to campus and have a presentation and do on interviews on campus. Even though they can be virtual, but essentially on, on campus. You have to hustle regardless. Yes. So it's the awesome thing about coming to Fuqua or any, any um, of the top business schools is you have the best companies in the world coming and wanting to meet you and they have dedicated people to come talk to you and they have interview slots for Fuqua people. That is amazing. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. But they, <laughs> they have, so when these companies that come to campus, they have, or they already know around how many people they're going to get. So if you, it's not easier, but it's more certain. So you know that Amazon is always going to come and hire X people like last year they hired 28 for the internship um so you know microsoft has i don't know 10 offers for fuqua and that's kind of like it's more certain but it doesn't make it more easy it's still a hustle and with all the other things that are not related like cmc related it is a little a little harder because you kind of have to find these opportunities but the hustle is there any anyway (laughs) In both options. Yes. So you, for me, I had my list of companies and I didn't distinguish whether it was an on-campus company or not. I knew that I still needed to talk to people, to get support, to submit my resume, do an interview, follow up. That's kind of the same. The main thing that we try to help people is like figure out, you know, where do you want to live? What what do you think is a features of a good company? Like, where do you want to work? What role would you like to be in? Um, and do a lot of self discovery to help you then focus yourself because the world can be pretty big. There's a lot of companies out there and there's a lot of different things to do. And that's the one thing about off campus is it helps to be focused. If you know, with a lot of our, our friends, if, you know what you want, that makes it a lot easier and you can you can wait, but not everyone is there. So you have to go through that process um, yourself, but hustle is required for all. For all, yeah. Cool, next question. Can you please explain the difference between product and program manager at, in Amazon? Okay, that is a hard one to answer because it, it's, I think no one knows. Even <laughs> after being there, I still kind of don't get it but I'll I'll try to help a little bit. So it depends a lot between teams and maybe between kind of like departments there. So if you think of retail, I'm gonna kind of give the the difference for retail because I think that one was a little clearer for me. Uh, In the retail, you have the customer and then you have the salespeople that are like trying to get products on the website. So let's kind of distinguish like that. The product manager, is the person that is a little closer to the customer and the program manager is a little closer to the sales team kind of so let's come let's pretend i came up with like this new feature and we are going to launch that for the customers then i'm supposed to coordinate with the program manager to make sure that the rest of the company all the supporting teams in sales they know what this is so they can replicate it to all the businesses that are selling on amazon and get them to understand how to use this new th- this new feature and like how it's going to work for them what's the difference so i think that's kind of the difference you the product manager is closer to the customer the program manager is closer to sales and other supporting functions it's more internal i would say and then the product is a little more external but that's hard it will vary a lot if you talk to other teams I'm not going to pretend to understand Amazon's internal workings. (laughs) (laughs) Next question. (laughs) Next question. Annie, 
Does Fuqua Tech Club have any resources available for students looking to obtain tech-related certifications in agile management, specific products? Uh, have you found that this is a factor during recruiting process? We don't offer specific like, technical certifications like that. We've found that it's good to have, as we discussed, having working knowledge of these types yeah. of things, definitely helpful. If you're going to be a product manager, it would be helpful to know how software is made in like agile development yeah. methodology. And depending on your role, you will have to learn that. I, have I don't think not, it's been distinguishing. Yeah, I don't think I have seen any companies that require a certification for it. They, I think they care a little more if you know it than if you're certified. Like, They will be okay if you don't have a certification, as long as you can let them know that you know. All right, next question from Syed. Thanks for all your insights. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, you touched on this a little bit, but when going through the recruiting process for large technology companies particularly in product management, is there an opportunity to target a specific product or line of business, such as Prime Video for Amazon, or is the recruiting process a little more general and you are randomly placed within the company? So unfortunately, for the answer of this question, it depends. <laughs> it depends on the company. So at Amazon, as Julia described, you, you don't know. Yeah. Um, what, so at Amazon, what you could do is that after they have all the interns, they will kind of share the resumes with the teams and the teams will pick according to your options. So if you do get to know someone, if you network, if you find them, they could pick you. That's the possibility, but it's not sure. For Microsoft, like for product marketing, you apply to the, the role and you do the first round. They ask you what you want to do, like Azure or Office 365 or Windows. And then you interview in the final round for that, but you might not get what you asked for. So it kind of um, depends. I think at Cisco, it I, I don't think you really decide. I think you don't decide your project until you're, you're, you're getting into your internship. In terms of uh, my rule would be it really, you're not going to get to decide that type of thing until you get there. But once you do, if you do get an offer and accept, you definitely want to start making inroads with yeah. people. One thing to consider, though, is we're all we're all smart enough, right? We see that like cloud is popular. Unfortunately, everyone else also <laughs> thinks that that's popular and also wants to work on like Azure at Microsoft or on you know Amazon Go Alexa. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> so be just to manage your expectations, like be prepared, even if you get into a company, the company of your dreams, the odds are, unless you have a background, a deep background in that thing, you're probably going to start off on a product that's not your dream yeah. product or team. Never fear. If you, if you want to move to something else, that's totally fine. And you'll have the opportunity to do that. And how that works depends on the company. When you get there, you can figure that out. But like, not everyone gets to go work on Alexa or Azure on their internship. Yeah. That's just the fact of the But life. that's fine. You can always change after yeah. you're there. Not for the full time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have one more question. Luis, do you have any advice for those interested working in tech in the in tech industry but who have no tech skills or background? Yeah, we do. <laughs> yes. yes. So most of the people who come into business school and join the tech club don't have a deep technical background coincidentally both julie and i did work in technology st startup-ish roles and before uh but most of our peers did not did not and what all of those events and the various collateral that comes from those that we discussed at the beginning of the presentation that is meant for the the first the second year students and the club to get you to a point where you can get into an interview with one of these companies yeah. and and have a command yeah. of the content i think one of the things that is super important and we saw it work with uh, friends of ours is your resume needs to be translated so getting someone that worked in tech before that have more knowledge than you to kind of help you rewrite your stories in a more kind of techy way it's 
like words and like just the way you say things it changes and it makes your resume sound like a tech person even when you are not and then that will help you tell the recruiter that you can actually speak their language and you understand how the business work so that's really helpful and that definitely worked with a bunch of our friends um and then after that it's kind of like well if you're interested you can learn and you just show them that you know it once you're in the interview Yes, I, I would suggest if you're starting now, whether you're a prospective student or an admitted student, if there's companies or technologies that you're interested in, start reading about it, uh, asking questions, listening to podcasts, watching the news, yeah. talking to your friends about it. If you can have a conversation, like, look, you're, you're talking to the companies that are inventing the technology and the people that are, you know, in charge of it. So you want to be literate. Yeah. In that, and that yeah. that knowledge often doesn't even come from, you know, experience of like being an engineer. It comes from learning and yeah. just, just understanding uh, and being curious. So uh, that would be one area to start if you're thinking about a transition. And even if you're not, even if you're already in the industry, you still need to be up on everything yeah. because then they <laughs> are especially going to expect you to know yeah. something about what's going on. Yeah. Ooh, we don't have any more questions for now. Does anyone want to ask something? No. Nope. All right. Well, we can. We will. We have a few more talking points. We'll continue. Uh, if you have any questions, just let us know. So we talked about this a little bit, but how does the club support recruiting? So it's our. I mean, this is our job. Yeah, that's like, the main. The main thing we work on. So all the events, all the content. That's what. That's what we care about most. And so that's what the tech club is for. So you come to Fuqua, you work with the tech club to get um, the recruiting outcome that you want. Um, how do we, we, we work very closely with the Career Management Center, the CMC. So each industry uh, that is recruited for at Fuqua has a sector leader, sector director. Um, ours is Malcolm Riley. You can look him up. Um, he's a Fuqua grad. We do all of our planning with Malcolm. Yeah, we so, work very close to him. He helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, so he, one of the interesting things about being in business school is it's only two years long. So we don't, you know, when we came into the leadership in spring of last year, we didn't have anyone above us. <laughs> There's yeah. no one going to be there to help us run the club this year. And then the first years are coming in and they're, you know, they just want to learn from us. So... The CMC helps give perspective, yeah. helps us keep moving things forward, helps us you know, plan, and they do a really good job of engaging the companies. So we, like Julie and I, had the opportunity to talk to the companies a lot yeah. uh, as co-presidents, but not all the students necessarily do. So the CMC person, like Malcolm, is often that liaison to the companies if you know, something happens with your resume or something happens with the interview or any, a lot of logistics that go on with this, yeah. as you can imagine, they help with that a lot. Yeah, if you don't know what to say to the company, like you, you go to Malcolm, Malcolm's always there. Like as an example, I have a friend that had two interviews on the same day <laughs> and she didn't know, like she had already confirmed one, the other one arrived and she's like, what do I do now? Do I like say no? Do I ask them to change? So. When you're not super secure of what you should say, like Malcolm's always there to help. He's always like, okay, like with this company, this is the kind of approach you should have. Yep. Uh, so that's that's really important for us. Yes. <laughs> okay, we got another question. Uh, how a tech club member, so if you join the tech club, how do you help the club? Well, we have a lot of opportunities. We have a yeah. lot of different cabinet positions yeah. that we'll, we'll talk about. So... As a first, there's a first year and a second year cabinet, and they work together. Um, a few different things that we do. Number one would be um, the career cabinet. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be putting on the Tech 101 events, the lunch and learns, those types of things. Um, uh, also, there's the pipeline. So that's a five, uh, five session series so we have a team just dedicated yeah, we have um, six to that. people dedicated to that <laughs> yeah 
if you're interested in working on the finances of the club, we have someone who's in charge of the budget. Um, we have external relations. So one thing that we try to do is we want to get more companies to engage the club and engage Fuqua. So we have a team solely dedicated to that. Yeah, We have a team for marketing. So we have a team dedicated to our website, um, to our social media, which is not very active right now. <laughs> so we hope new students will come and focus on that. Uh, this person is also dedicated to coming up with like the design for our t-shirts uh, and things like that. Um, to give you a little bit of a broader kind of perspective, once you get in school in September, we recruit for the, the club. So the yours, not, not the first years, but the second years at the time, we will be recruiting for the first years. Uh, you apply, it's like a basic application. You answer a couple of questions. They will screen these questions. They will choose some people to interview. You, you get your job and you like, you kind of choose what it is that you want to do and what kind of activity you want to focus on. And then if you get picked, you're in the club. Then once you're in the club in the other year, um, there will be elections for a president. So we, we are kind of almost done with the club, which is kind of sad, um, but we're happy with what we did. Uh, so right now, people are applying to the presidency, and for that, it's an election. So it's always co-president, so there's always like two people running against other two or more. Um, and it's an election. After you get elected, then you choose your cabinet. So we got to pick who was going to be our second-year cabinet with us, and then we chose the, fir the, the cabinets chose the first year. So it kind of goes every year you ele get elected, and then you choose the people, and it goes like that. Um, really, the club is student-led, so we can pretty much do what we want. We focus on the pipeline this year because we thought it was a deficiency last year, and we hope the next presidents will choose something to focus on and kind of develop that and keep what we did kind of going. Um, so if there is something you're interested in doing, you don't even need to be in the cabinet to help. Like the person who led our Ajaya workshop, he was not in the club. He's, he's in the club, but he's not a cabinet member. Um, but there are limitless, limitless, oh, I don't even know how to say that, yeah. <laughs> opportunities to help. Yeah, so you can, there's the cabinet, which is kind of like you would expect, like a few people in the club leadership. But then if you're not in the cabinet, you can still be still in the club, still come to the events, still participate. As a cabinet member, like as a first year and a second year, you have a leadership responsibility. So it's like a... A, le a leadership opportunity on campus if you want to help your fellow students go through this process even as you're going through it yourself it's a good good way to get involved yeah we have more questions so have you ever seen GRE and GMAT requirements for recruiting into any tech company I have not have you no no that's an easy one to answer we have have not seen it and most people don't even have it on the resume it's not really important um, in addition to that do tech companies ask for MBA academic grades at Fuqua? Some of them do. Uh, as, as an example, uh, Google asks. I don't know how much of it it's super important. I think they just want to make sure you're not under some kind of limit, but that's not, it's not hard to be above the limit they're expecting. We, we haven't seen any hard yeah. limits like that. Some of the school again. Some companies do want you to upload your resume or enter it, but it's not a. It's a minor factor. I yeah, think, I don't think it's a process. no because of any of those. Good. Okay, so why we don't have any more questions? We thought we could talk to you about things that we wished we knew before we were recruiting, and for me, I think is. If I knew that we were going to be in recruiting in September, I would have started networking earlier. And I would have started kind of looking for the things I was interested in earlier. So I would be ready by September because it kind of comes as a wave and you're like, I just got here, but I already have to choose. So do your job before you get here. That will like save you a lot of stress. Yes. So we get we always get questions. So it's only... It's January 31st. Yeah. So if you're an admitted student, you won't be even starting orientation until the end of July or beginning of August. So you have, don't, don't freak out yet. Yeah. But we get a, que a lot of questions about what should you do. Yeah. So the number one thing, that, the first thing you can do 
is look at the employment report from this past year. It's on the Fuqua website and see the companies that Fuqua students are going to. Mm -hmm. It'll also show you a breakdown of the types of roles that people are going into and what geographies and the pay scale. That gives you a sense of like where, and then look, go in the past five years. So you'll see an uptick in a lot of this over the past several years. That'll first give you a sense for where is the Fuqua network. When you see those companies, then go and look for the role on LinkedIn. This is something that's like super helpful for Amazon. Go type in Amazon senior product manager. Like even they'll have, there's, it's open. There's an opening yeah. for somewhere on LinkedIn. There's always opening. For that. Go and read the description and see if it's something that you're and like, try to like internalize and see if it's something that you're interested in. You may have in your application already written something about it. I would do more. Uh, look at a whole, look at all the different companies for that recruit at Fuqua. Yeah. Look at the various positions and see what they are and try to think about, you know, is this something that, that I'd be interested. Uh, interested in? Yeah. Um, I'll talk about one thing that I, uh, didn't realize beforehand. So I had worked at a small company. Like when I joined, we had like 25 people. We didn't have like all the roles that the big companies have. And so I didn't really know about strategy or product marketing or even program like corporate management. finance or program management. Like my world was very small. Somehow I was able to get in. So that, <laughs> thank God. Um, but once you get to school, your mind is going to, like, in many ways, will be opened. Uh, even regardless of what co size company you work for, there's going to be roles and opportunities that make themselves available that you might be a good fit for and you might really like. Uh, so I would don't keep, keep your mind open and expect to be surprised, expect to like learn more. Like one thing, like, the admissions process is humbling. The recruiting process is, is even more humbling. Just ex always remember that you know nothing and that you can learn more. Um, and don't be surprised if you find out you you find that that's something you like that you never tried before. Yeah, that's true. We got one more question. Having team at Apple, Team Cook at Apple, does Fuqua get any special treatment? Not really. <laughs> well, Tim is coming to be the commencement yes. speaker this year. That'll be a recorded presentation, I think. So yes. in May, you can watch that. I'm very excited. <laughs> I think I would say he has his eye out yeah. on, an, on an individual basis. Like, the best students get the jobs. So, like, Apple recruits at Fuqua. Apple does not recruit <laughs> most other places, yeah. so we are on their list. Yeah, that's if it. we have good people, they'll they, get it. They, they'll, they'll get it, but that's about, that's about <laughs> the extent yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. I guess the special treatment we get is that they come here. They come here. <laughs> they yeah. come here for recruiting. It's good. They could go anywhere they wanted, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, if no one has more questions, I think we kind of went through everything we had to say. Thank you so much for uh, joining. We yeah. hope to see you in the future. Yeah, uh, Come to Blue Devils Weekend. Yeah, if you get in, come to Blue Devil Weekend. You'll see us. Yes. Uh, if you're a prospective student, you can find us on the internet and reach out to us. We'd be happy to, to talk to you. Yeah. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.